Hell Jumpers. Prologue. Experiments. I'm bored. Scootaloo and the other Crusaders had been stuck in the clubhouse for the better part of the day, trying to figure out what they would try to do next to find out their special talent. Come on, Scoots, we'll think of something that we can do to find our cutie marks. Sweetie Belle said, trying to cheer up the mood in the clubhouse. Seriously, Sweetie, look at all the stuff that we tried to do already. I mean, a cutie mark in garbage collecting. Scootaloo held up a shoddily drawn image of a pony dragging a filled trash can. Come on, Scootaloo, we'll figure out what to do next soon, I'm sure of it. Apple Bloom said as she grabbed the drawing from Scootaloo's hooves and added it to the rather large pile of failed cutie mark attempts. And this time we didn't even get covered in tree sap. Sweetie happily added. No, we just got covered in trash, which I think is one of the things that are worse than tree sap. Scootaloo said as she got up and headed for the door. I'm going to Twilight's. I need to do some repairs to my scooter. She has manuals that can help. Wait, what? Apple Bloom shouted. You are going to voluntarily read books? Sweetie Belle followed up after Apple Bloom. Who are you and what have you done to Scootaloo? Apple Bloom said with a baffled expression on her face. Unless one of you two have a better idea for finding our cutie mark. Otherwise, it's better than just sitting around doing nothing. Scootaloo said as she stepped onto her scooter. See you all tomorrow at school? Apple Bloom and Sweetie Belle looked at each other. Eh, sure thing, Scoots. Apple Bloom finally answered after an uncomfortable silence. See you tomorrow. And with that, Scootaloo shot off on her scooter towards Twilight's Tree Library, where, unbeknownst to her, Twilight was busy creating a portal using high-powered magic. Spike, do you have the charged gemstones? Twilight asked as she was painting magic circles onto the floor of the library. I'm almost done with the circles. Are you sure it's safe to do this in the main room of the library, Twilight? This is probably the most high-powered experiment we have ever done! Spike shouted from the basement, which, since Twilight had moved into the library, had been converted to a science lab. I really don't have any other place to do this, Spike. These circles have to be very large, and I don't want to do it outside because of thematic radiation hazards. Twilight said as she walked into the middle of the circle. Now, can you bring the crystals over here, please? Spike came up from the stairs from the basement carrying a box of glowing gems. Do we have to use these for the experiment? They look delicious. Spike said while licking his lips. No, Spike, I got these from Cadence, and believe me, they aren't cheap trinkets. These are the most high-quality gems the Empire digs up. Twilight swiftly grabbed the box of gems from Spike and placed the gems in a predetermined pattern in magical circles. Now, Spike... I want you to get up to the second floor, any disturbance down here will probably cause a catastrophic explosion. Spike, not really wanting to get blown up today, went up to the stairs to look at the experiment from the second floor. Now, what are we trying to accomplish by doing this again? Twilight internally sighed a bit. Uh, we're attempting to make a portal between Cancelot Castle and the Crystal Spire. To do that, we need to be able to make a rift in space and attach it to an object. Link the object with another object to create a bridge between them, and then make a physical portal that allows for direct travel between the two locations. Uh, Twilight? I have no idea what you just said. Ah, uh, just uh, stay up there, Spike. I need to combine a few spells to successfully attach the rift to an object. As soon as Twilight's horn started to glow, tendrils of magic started to come from the crystals and fed into the circles onto the ground. After about 10 seconds, the magic stopped coming from the crystals and they stopped glowing right as the circles started to light up. Let's do this! Scootaloo raced through Ponyville, bobbing and weaving through the crowd. The other crusaders stayed behind at the clubhouse. Unlike usual days, she wasn't performing any stunts with her scooter and there was a nasty crack on the board and she hoped that either something in the library could help, or that Twilight would know a spell that could fix up the board itself. As she approached the library, she sped up a bit as the crowd seemed to thin a bit. As she crossed the final corner in the direction of the library, her luck took a turn for the worse. She hit a rock onto the road, causing her scooter to break through the middle and launching her at the library door. The door was thrown inwards, breaking the lock and what Scootaloo landed straight into a circle of what looked like some glowing chalk on the floor. Scootaloo, don't move. A heavily distorted voice called out to her. Looking over to where the voice came from, she found that Twilight was standing in the middle of the room, magic floating around her in an intricate pattern. Scootaloo, I need you to slowly walk backwards, out of the library. Terror was clearly showing on her face as she tried to keep control of the spell that she was casting. Scootaloo slowly took a step backwards, keeping her vision pointed at Twilight, causing her to trip in one of the crystals. The circles on the ground flared around her the moment Scootaloo belly flopped. The magic tendrils around Twilight slammed into the crystals causing the entire room to light up as bright as the sun momentarily. And then everything went silent. 
Not even the sound of the wind blowing through the library's leaves could be heard. Twilight, what's going on? Scootaloo whispered. I was making a rift in space to create a portal. Twilight whispered back. There was a lot of magic that went back into those crystals. There is no way that the light is the only side effect from the spell collapsing. A soft humming started coming back from the middle of the room as a blue light appeared to come from the center of the room, opening up in a black sphere. Twilight had just jumped towards Scootaloo and put up a shield before the sphere got the chance to grow to the size of the entire bottom floor, only to collapse moments later. As the sphere collapsed in on itself, it left a giant gap in the library wall, and both Twilight and Scootaloo were nowhere to be found. 